Hi everyone, my name is Wendy. I uh, work at Google on CICD as a software engineer. Um, and the most important thing you're gonna learn about me in this talk is that I love dogs. Um, so let's get started. Oh, and I'm, I'm gonna talk about operating Tecton efficiently uh, and securely for multi-team use cases. Um, so for the purpose of this talk, um, we have this company called Things Dogs Love. Um, and Things Dogs Love has three team leads. One of them is Peanut, and he's our Tecton operator. Sadie, she's an application engineer on the Blankets team, and Charlie is an application engineer on the Treats team. Um, Peanut wants to be able to operate Tecton uh, securely and simply, as simply as possible. He wants one installation. He doesn't want to deal with multiple clusters for his teams. And it's important to note that Charlie really loves to use the advanced features of Docker that are in the experimental uh, areas. So that will come up later, but calling it out now. So we have some uh, CICD goals. Um, the main goals are, as I mentioned before, to share common infrastructure across the company. Builds should produce provenance. So we talked earlier about Salsa. Um, we want builds to produce provenance in order to achieve the Salsa level two uh, requirements. And the security team has really asked Peanut to work towards Salsa level three. So. Tecton Chains isn't quite there yet, but there are also some things about how you run your CI-CD system and how builds are executed that help to fulfill Salsa 3 requirements. Um, and, and part of that is that one, one pipeline run in Tecton's case shouldn't be able to influence other concurrently running pipeline runs. Um, and then finally, the infrastructure must balance team resource consumption, compute costs should be as low as possible, and pipeline run latency should be low so we don't get impatient application developers. So what Peanut set up is this system where he has out front a thin control plane. Um, and I'm gonna come back to that and talk about it in a second. Um, and then he has a CI-CD cluster. Um, you can see that he isolated the Tecton pipelines and uh, change controllers in their own namespace and in their own node pool. This is just to ensure that the developer workloads who um, don't run in the same, uh, on the same machine or in the same Tecton namespace, or sorry, in the same Kubernetes namespace as the controllers because we don't trust the application developer code. Um, so we wanna keep them as far away from our, our control plane code as possible. This thin control plane API is so that um, Peanut can authenticate the workloads that come through and then um, append the node selectors to the developer team's pipelines so that they get directed to the right um, namespace and node pool. Um, important to note that the Tecton control namespace would be tainted and the only things tolerated to run there would be the, um, the Tecton operator workloads, which is controller and chains, or pipelines and chains. So we are generating provenance with Tecton chains. Um, and there is one problem with the setup on the previous page, and that's that um, Tecton chains will output provenance to a single location. So what we've decided to do is run, uh, run each app dev workload in a separate namespace as well, and then each chains instance, we install two chains controllers instead of just one, and each of those watches the corresponding um, app dev namespace and can write provenance to the place configured by the app dev team. So this fixes our separate namespaces per, or this fixes our um, ability for chains to write its provenance out to separate registries based on the team. Um, so, you know, Charlie's team, the Treats team is working toward a new feature launch and they're, they're just pushing stuff out like very rapidly. Um, and it's, Sadie comes over to Peanut and lets him know that she's not getting any resources for her, her builds and she doesn't understand why she has these high queues. There's, there's very high latency for her. It's a new problem today. So Peanut does some investigation and he sees that the Truth team is just taking all the resources. In order to address this, um, he puts the, the two app dev teams into separate node pools where we can configure the minimum number and maximum number of nodes allocated to those teams separately. And that means that no matter how busy the Treats team is, the Blankets team will always have resources. 
Um, and this also offers another layer of isolation between the builds, um, such that the, the treats uh, pipeline runs and the, the blankets pipeline runs will never end up running task runs on the same machine. So let's talk more about isolation. We currently have um, pod level isolation between our pipelines, and that, that's just offered by Tecton. Um, the pipelines from separate teams now run in separate node pools and in separate namespaces. But multiple pipelines from a single team can still run on the same node. So there's some risk for pod escapes and uh, simultaneous runs to influence each other. So there, there's some investigative work that we need to do around sandboxing using something like GKE Sandbox or, or other options out there to avoid um, concurrent task runs influencing one another. All right, now we get over to the compute cost. Uh, we don't want idle nodes running. It's not great. Um, so we set up auto scaling. And in this case, we have a maximum and minimum number of nodes per node pool, and we'll scale up as resources are required. Right now, the minimum is run one, so there is always one node ready to run. But scaling when a new, when a new pod needs to be scheduled and we have to bring up another node, it can take up to 50 seconds, where it's 10 seconds for the auto scaler to realize we need more, more nodes, and then another 40 seconds to actually bring up that extra machine. So the app devs get tired and start complaining that their builds are too long. So Peanut finds a solution. There's a blog post at the bottom of here that's very tiny, but if you're, if you're interested in reading more, I suggest going to that. So we have this concept of balloon pods. So you can see on these slides, I'm sorry it's a little hard to read. Um, the pink pods are our balloon pods, and the blue pods are our tecton task runs. Um, so what is a balloon pod? It's a pod that we just schedule when we bring up the node pool at a uh, negative 10 priority. So as soon as we need more resources, the balloon pod gets bumped, and then it becomes a pending pod, and the application pod, so the task runs are able to be scheduled within a second rather than 50 seconds, which is pretty exciting. Um, and then while the application pods are running, the balloon pod will be scheduled and capacity will be added while no one's waiting for it. So it's a great concept and it decreased the latency startup time during scale, scale up. Um, and it also makes the, the workload, the timing of the, the pipeline run executions more predictable because now you know that you're not gonna have occasional spikes in, in the time that things run. Um, so the other issue we have is around um, <laughs> Docker usage. So right now, the way that uh, you run Docker builds in uh, Tecton is you attach a Docker and Docker sidecar to a task. And, and then all of the, the builds that require Docker to build run in that sidecar. And the issue here is those sidecars are ephemeral per task run. Um, and their storage is also ephemeral. So we don't benefit from the, the node cache or anything else. We, we just have to pull images fresh every time. Um, so what we do here is we create a new image pool job. And we provision two persistent volumes um, that are going to pull images that the application developers specifically ask for. So those. This doesn't solve all of our caching problems, but if there are common images that um, the users are using in their task steps, we can cache those. So each, each uh, application developer team gets to indicate the list of images that they would like to have cached. And then we set this image pool job up, which is just a cron job that runs um, periodically, uh, and we have a cache expiry time. So at the cache expiry time, we start to mount the, the inactive um, persistent volume to all new pods that, are, that require the Docker and Docker uh, sidecar. Um, and this is mounted through our own custom Docker and Docker image. Um, so it's, it's mounted as the storage on that Docker and Docker image. And then um, after the cache expiry, when we're, we, we switch the inactive one to active, and then we ensure that all, that the, the previously active pod is no longer being used by any, any task runs before we um, mount that to the image pool job and refresh the cache. Um, and so that's, essentially, it gives us better caching. Um, 
it doesn't solve all the problems, as I mentioned, because if you, if you build an image that you want to use later on in your task runs, you always have to pull that from the registry. So there is a proposal for a pipeline level sidecar in the Tecton community, and that's the type of thing that we would need to really help with caching, along with some, some sort of solution like this that has the built-in cache for things that you just don't want to pull all the time. So those were all of the main complaints from our application developer teams. Um, we talked about sharing infrastructure across teams in a secure and uh, balanced way, generating provenance, resource isolation, and uh, reducing compute costs and latency. Um, and that's all I got. I think I won't take questions in the, in, to honor our time. I actually have time, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, any questions? Go ahead. So how do the, the names get automatically get uh, created? They, they end up, they're, they're not automatically created. They have to be provisioned per application developer team. So we just generate, like when we configure our cluster for a new application developer team, we, we add a namespace for that team. And then within that thin API server, like, um, in here, we, we ensure that the um, namespaces are added to the Tecton requests there. And we have like a mapping of like, right. you know, right. it's so based on the user submitting it, we know what team they're on. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Uh, Yeah, yeah, and I think that that's pretty fairly straightforward config with chains. So it's, um, I don't remember exactly where we configured it. It's been a while, but yeah. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the question was whether we find the taints and tolerations burdensome um, for for managing, I think. Is that a good summary? Yeah. Um, so I think with with enough teams, like it's it's all just code, right? So you just have the mappings of like this team gets this. And so the, the burdensome part is the initial configuration. But once that's set up, it's it's just like quick lookups into tables to indicate what gets added to which request. So we, we've considered things around um, how to like do, like right now the, the node types are configurable by the app dev team based on what they think their workloads will look like. Um, I don't think we've specifically considered the, did you say spot instances? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't considered that. Something to look into. Uh, sorry, next question. Does this run on AWS? Uh, actually, this is mostly running on uh, GKE. Any other questions? No, I was ready for mine. If you think of anything else that you want to ask, uh, I'll be around. Feel free to find me. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>